Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel, Microscope Beauty. Today we are talking about January favorites. I have a lot to cover. January is a month of a lot of cool stuff. It was post Christmas, so I really got to enjoy some of my Christmas presents. And then they're gonna make it into this favorites video. I got a new purse. Oh, I'm so excited about it. But let's start with beauty stuff because I just feel like that's how you're supposed to start a favorites video. So the first thing is this Derma E anti wrinkle scrub. Not sure how the anti-wrinkle stuff comes in. I don't understand that stuff. I don't get the science behind it. I'm gonna have wrinkles. So maybe this just makes it so I don't have wrinkles sooner. I don't know. But what I really like about it is that it is a super good exfoliant. It has some like apricot seed powder in it that gives that grit to like exfoliants we used to really like until we realized that that like bead stuff was really bad for the environment. This is with apricot seed, so you still get that really good like texture without it being harmful and you feel bad about it, which is always a plus. I hate when I feel bad about skincare. Just me, cool. But I think it's just a really great product. It's super creamy. It doesn't bother my skin too much. I have very sensitive areas on my skin, even though I have really dry skin. There's some areas that are like, don't put anything on me ever. And this is really gentle on that while I feel like it's actually getting stuff done. So huge fan of this. I really like Derma E. I think I might be doing a blog post about my favorites from the line because at first I was kind of like, eh, it's, it's okay. It doesn't seem to be like anything special, but there are a few products that are amazing. So definitely look out for that blog post. I rediscovered a long lost love this month. It's the Bare Minerals Complexion Rescue, the Tinted Hydrating Gel Cream. I use the shade Natural 05, and I was obsessed with this a couple of years ago, basically before we moved here, so like 2014-ish. I loved this stuff. I went through tubes and tubes of it, and then I discovered the It Cosmetics CC Cream and a couple other things. So I kind of stopped using this, but I gave it a go this month, and I remember exactly why I love it. I'm not wearing it today, which would have been a good thing to do, but I'm not wearing it. I'm wearing a um, It Cosmetics foundation. I wanted something a little bit heavier. Not like you care. But this has the best dewy finish of any of my bases. The It Cosmetics one, the CC cream, has a really nice glow to it, but this one just has something so much more. And the shade um, Natural 05 is a bit too dark for me, but when I like blend it down my neck, it looks so good and I just love it. It makes me seem a little bit more tan. It lasts really well. It's really good for dry skin. It adds a lot of moisture and richness back in. It blends out evenly and like super quickly. So if you haven't given this a shot yet and you like the It Cosmetics CC Cream, definitely give this a go. It's a bit more hydrating, a bit more dewy, but along the same lines, so it's amazing. This next beauty product, I had a really hard time buying because it's like $45 or something like that. But I had heard Anna from the Anna Edit talk about it forever. And I really wanted a good sculpting powder for contouring that wasn't too orange. There's just something about my skin tone that needs like the most gray brown that there is and I cannot find it. I just walked through Sephora recently and I was like, no, 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 to like, every single contour that they had, but this one is the closest thing I found to a really good sculpting powder for me. So it is the Kevin Aquan Sculpting Powder. I have the shade Light, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to bounce up to the next one for summer, because this is just, just perfect right now. So I don't know if you can see it, I think you guys can, but it just is so natural on the skin, you can really build it up without looking too orange, which is clearly not what I want to do. Nobody wants to look orange. It's definitely not in, ever. So this is amazing. I was so on the fence about it because of the price, and at first when I started using it, I was like, it's not working, it's not working! And I thought I just, you know, wasted a ton of money, but I love how it looks now, and it's so easy to wear. I am looking for a better contour brush, so if you have any suggestions, there is one from Sephora that I think is not a contour brush that I'm interested in, but what do you guys use? I want something a little like thinner, but fluffy. You know, thin and fluffy, that's what I'm going for. The last beauty product is a concealer. It is the It Cosmetics Perfect Lighting Radiant Neutral Radiant Touch Magic Wand. It corrects, conceals, and brightens, and it does that. It does all of those things. So my least favorite thing is the packaging. It's one of those like, 
weird brush tips that you like push the bottom and stuff comes out. This looks disgusting. I should have cleaned that. That's embarrassing. But I love the product in it. So what I tend to do is put a just regular concealer underneath and then put this on top. I did a whole blog post talking about which concealers work for which problems you might have. So I will link that below. And this is the type of concealer that I can put on top of anything. And it gives this really nice radiant glow without looking too shiny. I like to put this under my eyes specifically. I have very bad dark under eye circles. And this does wonders at making it look a little more even, a little bit more natural. So now onto the more paper product -y section. I feel like I always have a paper product section because I am a planner addict. You have to have a paper product section. So the first thing is the 52 list project book that I got for Christmas. I have been using it for a month now and I really like it. So I used to be a big heavy journaler when I was younger, writing all my thoughts out, how everyone has wronged me and so and so didn't like me. I've gone past that now. And I think that this is a really cool way to get some journaling in without having to, you know, just like stream of conscious. I have a really hard time like setting time for that. So this is just a nice like fun little activity I can do right before bed where I get the prompt and then I can just write down my thoughts and then be good to go. It's also been really fun because I've been asking Alex some of the questions. So I had a section on each of the page for like his response. So it's just really nice to like, have like things to talk about and figure out what he thinks like list number three was the happiest moments of your life so far so it was really fun to see like what he thought were, were his happy moments and how they related to mine and i learned a lot more about him so i've been enjoying this a lot and i'm trying really hard not to like skip ahead to do more so i'm only doing one a week because obviously 52 lists for the entire year i'm sure by now you guys are going to be super tired of me talking about this but i'm going to talk about this it is my 2017 in review photo book. I don't know why I haven't done this in the past. So I wrote a whole blog post about this. So if you want to read more and you're like, okay, why is she so obsessed? But I just think it's such a fun way to get that like photo album vibe of the yesteryear without having to actually like buy photo albums and put four by sixes in. And I have this terrible habit of like removing photos from those photo albums and not putting them back. So all of my tangible photo albums have like photos periodically missing from them. I don't, I don't know why, but this is a really great way to like see what you got up to in the year. So I just have a bunch of photos from various things that happened to us. I wasn't planning on making this, so I didn't have a really good like setup in like mind. So I had to like gather photos everywhere. This year I'm planning ahead. I have a like folder on my computer where I add photos that I know I want to be in the next year's book. So definitely recommend doing that. But I got mine from Shutterfly, but you can get them anywhere. It's not like a, you have to use Shutterfly sort of thing. But I just, I think you should do it. You're gonna really enjoy it. And it's just already fun to look back on and I'm, I'm gonna be done talking about it, I promise. That's probably the third to the last time I'm gonna talk about it. Next up, the next thing is very exciting. I think this is the first time I've shared it on this channel. I've talked about it on our vlog channel a little bit and a little bit on my Instagram. So you might have already seen it. If not, follow those things so you get sneak peeks and you get to know things ahead of time. Then when you see stuff, you're like, I already knew that because Kayla and I are besties. Seriously, follow those. But we, Oh Hello Stationery Co., is releasing Traveler's Notebook covers. I'm so excited. So what's really cool about these Traveler's Notebooks is that they are faux leather. So if you're not on that leather train, this is a much more affordable and still like chic looking option. But what's also really cool is that the covers can be customizable to whatever pattern and design you like as well as your name. So this one doesn't have any customization because I really like the way that they look like blank. And then we also are gonna have three different colors of like faux leather. So we have brown, black, and like a kind of like a maroony pink. So more information is coming out on this, but I wanted to include it in this video because I've been using them. So I have a B6 size and an A6 size, and I've been using both this month for my planning and I am loving it. So that's kind of why I included it in this video is because I'm actually using them a lot this month, but it's also like a spoiler of things to come. And I also really like this feature because Alex designed these, obviously. All of, it, all of this is designed by him and it was all of his special like touches. 
more uh, will come on this. I promise we'll do like close-up videos and everything because there's a lot of really cool features. But the straps for the notebooks go on the outside. And at first I was like, I don't know if that's gonna work. Is it gonna get stuck on stuff? But I have fallen in love with it. I think it's just such a distinct style. And it's really cool that like Alex put his special like designer touch on things. But enough about them. So excited. They've been really helpful for me this month. I've been using the B6 for like meetings. We've been doing a lot of meetings for Oh Hello Promo. And I go with Alex and like take notes and stuff. So having like a larger notebook has been really helpful for that. And then I've just been enjoying using this as my main traveler's notebook. Oh no, I forgot to mention something in the beauty category. Ugh. So I got a new curling iron this month. My hair is curled by this curling iron and I bought it off of Amazon. And at first I was a little concerned that the like cheapskate in me was being too cheap because it was like 20 or $30. And Alex was like, it's not gonna be a good curling iron if you only spent like 20 or $30 you need something better. So I was like, oh, I'll give it a shot. I bought it, might as well see if it works out for me. This is amazing. This is the best curling iron I have ever used. It has a like heat temperature so you can see the actual temperature of your curling iron. The cord is ridiculously long. So if you do like curling hair for other people or need like length, this is fantastic for that. I got a 1.25 barrel because I wanted bigger curls without being like super big. And I also got the one with the clamp just in case I want to like actually curl my hair instead of doing this like twist thing I do. It's amazing. I will link it below. I've linked everything I can below if you're interested in anything. But this one specifically is such a good curling iron for the price. It's so nice and I really like the color. Okay, I think that's enough. I think you guys know that I like this. I think I've done a good enough job. Let's talk about handbags. Let's talk about handbags. Let's talk about handbags. So I don't buy handbags. I don't buy a lot of anything. I don't know if that's the point has been get, got across in videos, but I am terrible at spending money on myself. I do not buy things even if I need things. So whenever I buy something new, it's like a huge event and there's a lot of regret. I, I was a pretty bad shopaholic in my youth. If you watch like original microscope beauty videos, I was doing hauls like every other day. Not the point. This video is gonna be very long. I feel like I haven't talked to you guys in a while. So let's get to it. I bought a bag and it's amazing. So it's from Target and I'll link the one I got below and it was about $40, which to me was like way too much for a bag. But I know people spend like hundreds of hundreds of dollars on bags, but this bag is amazing. So I wanted something that was a little more professional looking, but also could hold all of my stuff because for some odd reason, I think an apocalypse is gonna happen whenever I leave the house. So I gotta fill it with things I don't need. So I wanted something big, kind of like a bucket bag-ish where you can just like dump stuff in there. But then it has these really awesome like side zippers for even extra storage that goes in the side. There are tons of like pockets and compartments on the inside. And then this front zipper I use for my phone. So huge, huge win with this bag. If you wanna see a what's in my bag video, I've been thinking about doing one. So if you wanna see that, let me know in the comments and I'll show you how I've been filling this and like what all can fit into it. And I think it comes in a couple of different colors as well. But I wanted a black for a little bit more sleeker look, but huge, huge success. Very chuffed. Chuffed with my purchase, as the uh, British, British peeps say, or at least Anna Edit does. I am a huge fan of her. She should be in my favorites video. But the Anna Edit is like amazing. And she says chuffed all the time, which I think is cool. I feel like British people have such cool sayings. We're back on point now. Next thing I'm gonna talk about is a Christmas gift that Alex and I got for ourselves. And I forgot to include it in my what I got for Christmas video, even though it was sitting like right there. We got a Nintendo Switch and this is super dirty, but we decided we wanted a gaming console, something we could do together. And Alex was also really upset that I had never played Zelda before. So that was the first game we got. And we also had that road trip to Minnesota at the end of the year. And it's amazing. This is the best gaming console I've ever had. I've had a couple in the past, but this one is so cool. So it has like this like portable tablet, but then you can like remove the controllers and play like two people games, or you can put it into an actual controller and play on the TV. And it's so simple to use. All you gotta do is put this like in its dock 
and it turns the TV on, or at least our TV turns on, and the game's already pulled up, and you just like slip the controllers out and you can play whatever you want to play. So we have Mario Odyssey, um, Zelda, and then we also have Mario Kart, and my God, is this amazing. <laughs> On to the last part of my favorites video. This might be my favorite part of my favorites video. It's the board game section where I talk about my favorite board games. There should be some like flashy intro like whoa, da -da 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 -da. but I am just one person and do not have those skills. So my two favorite board games this month. First one is Sushi Go Party. We picked this up earlier in January and it is a blast. So what's really cool about this is it's two to eight players. So you can play it with like a party or just between like you and your significant other or something. And basically you're trying to get a good combination of sushi to get the most points. But what's interesting about this game is that you pass your hand. So you have like a handful of cards, you pick one card and you pass it to the other person. They pick one card, so on. So you're constantly passing the deck. I will be doing a ton more explanations on these board games. I'm not doing them justice, but I am going to start doing my board game videos. So hopefully by the end of this week, there'll be one up or by next week, because the next board game I'm going to talk about is the first one we're doing as like the review. So this one is photosynthesis and you basically grow trees and collect points and it's amazing. This is what it looks like when you're growing the trees. So this is going to be the first video are the first board game that I talk about in my first board game review video and I might do Sushi Go up there but I'm so excited to do board game reviews. I hope they're good. I want them to be good. Like I want them to be clear and you know what the game's about, you know my opinions on the game without being too, too much. So we'll see how it works out. I'm hoping to film it this weekend and then this video is going up next week and I hope that that one goes up next week as well. There has been so much going on this month besides all of my favorites. We went to a murder mystery at my sister's house, which basically made me fall in love with murder mystery parties and also fall in love with costume parties. Pretty sure Alex and I are gonna have a costume drawer or a costume closet if we're not careful because the murder mystery was cruise themed and I was a showgirl and also the victim. I got to die, which was amazing, but it was just so much fun. So we're gonna have one at our house, I think in April, and I want it to be like flapper 1920s themed. So we did that. And then we've also been watching Sabrina the Teenage Witch and it's on Amazon Prime. So I think if you have Amazon Prime, you can watch all of the seasons. And it is as bad as I remember, but it's better in so many ways. It's so funny. It's so funny. So we're on season two. We just watch a couple episodes every night and we are loving it. It's it's so good. Like 90s amazingness is happening when you watch The Brain of the Teenage Witch. But other than that, those were all of my favorites. Pretty sure this video is quite long. One of the longer videos. I don't really do long ones, but I apparently had a lot, a lot to say or not say and just ramble. But that is gonna be it for today's video. Let me know in the comments below what things you have been loving this month, any new board games, any new TV shows. Let me know all of that down in the comments. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it, if you enjoyed a longer video from me and subscribe to see more videos and see that board game video coming up soon. And I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.